Hey y'all, it's my review for The Real Housewives of Miami, episodes 12 and 13. Where has the time gone? Like, I'm three episodes behind. Like, we're on 14 this week. I'm like, geez, Peacock, can you like give us like a one week break or something? Like, they are just moving this season along. Anyway, I apologize for being behind. I will get to episode 14 at a later date because I still got to do Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, that trash reunion, and then I'll be caught up. But let's get into episode 12. So this is the episode where they have like the couple's dinner, uh, the gringo dinner, and don't worry, I will get into what I think about that name a little bit later. But uh, we get a little preview where dinner has gone off the rails, like the couples are fighting. And then uh, we rewind to a day before because production is always on their Shonda Rhimes kick. So first we're with the Cuban freaking frag, Marisol and Alexia. They're at the fat doctor that was recommended by Marisol. Now she's ranting and raving about the doctor, but she's never had any services from him. She just brings her friends to see him. Sure, Jan. So the topic of the conversation is Nicole and her behavior at Alexia's legal lunch that she had. They thought it was very offensive for her to drop her black card in the lawyer's lap. Alexia's saying, what lawyer takes cards? Like you drop it in his lap like a stripper? Now, I think lawyers definitely take cards, especially black cards. I didn't see anything wrong with what Nicole did. I mean, she shouldn't have dropped the card in the lawyer's lap, but it was the heat of the moment. Alexa was clearly on Lars's side and was trying to silence Nicole. And she was like, oh, well, I'm paying $700 an hour for his time. Nicole was like, okay, girl, ain't nothing but a thing. Let me get my black card out. That was it. But Alexia still has this chip on her shoulder. And speaking of Nicole, we cut to her right quick as she's calling a few of the ladies on FaceTime about the Bahamas trip that she's hosting. Uh, she mostly wants to do it because the first time they did the trip, like the whole Lisa thing blew up. So she wants this to be a, well, <laughs> They always say they want it to be a drama-free vacation, but she just wants it to be an easy getaway for Lisa this time around. We're back with freaking Frack, and Alexia's saying she's not going to disinvite Nicole from the Gringo dinner that they planned together. So they're deciding to call it a Gringo dinner because four of the ladies are with gringos. I don't know. I just think it's a little problematic. Like, is this dinner celebrating the white men that y'all with? Is that a term of endearment? Also, why isn't Julia invited? I mean, she's married to a gringo as well. It could have just been a couple's dinner. Like, that would have been fun to watch. But yeah, I just think it was a little weird. And it coming from Alexia, who frequently says things that are problematic. I'm just not surprised. But anyway, we then see them playing in these people's doctor's office. I ain't got time. Fast forward. Next scene, we're with Julia and Adriana meeting up for lunch, and Adriana, she has a chip on her shoulder from Alexia still not apologizing to her. She's saying she's even having nightmares about her. As for Julia, she's just updating Adriana on her adoption journey, and it seems to be a little bit more difficult than she thought it would be. Next scene, we're at Lisa's house, and Lars is coming over to visit. Lisa's still going through it, and Lenny is definitely trying to put her and the kids out the house. Now, when she says out the house, she's trying to put her in a rental until she finds her a different house to live in. I'm kind of torn on this because like, Lisa, you really want to stay in this $80 million house? I mean, how you gonna upkeep it? I'm just wondering why should she stay in that house? And if y'all agree she should stay in the house, y'all let me know in the comments. Cause I'm thinking it's not like with Portia and Cordell where like Portia didn't have nowhere to go. I think he's actually offering her a place to stay for the kids. Now he's still a dick. Like, don't get it twisted. But I'm just saying, like, he's not completely putting her out, per se. As Lisa's telling this to Larsa, I mean, of course she can relate as well, being that she had a high-profile divorce from her Stonehenge NBA player. It does seem, though, as the episodes are progressing, that Lisa's finally coming to terms that she can't save this marriage. Because it really felt like she was trying to fix it. Next scene, it's the day of the gringo dinner. It's four couples, cute restaurant, Alexia, she's still pissed at Nicole for not reaching out to her to apologize, but Nicole has no idea that Alexia is still pissed at her. We then cut to production asking the ladies in their confessionals to kind of define the term gringo. And I'm not sure why they're trying to pretend like it doesn't directly translate to a white guy. And no, Marisol, it does not mean an American guy. 
in my opinion. Every time I've heard like, you know, Latinos use it or some of my friends, it means, oh, a white guy, oh, el gringo. Like, not a term of endearment, but hey, they think it's cute. They're giving this whole Disneyfication of the term, and it's very eye-rolling. So far, it's a peaceful dinner. Everyone's getting along. I actually kind of forgot Gertie was there, because she's kind of fading in the background in this scene. And then her husband doesn't make it any better, because he's the most chillest person at the table. Side note, did y'all notice that everyone at the table is eating except for Marisol? Yet again, all she's having is a cocktail. But nope, no cause for concern there. So the conversation then steers to the legal lunch that was hosted by Alexia, and then she takes this time out in front of the table to call out Nicole for her behavior. Now again, I don't think she did anything wrong, but Alexia's getting real hyped now, scolding her about the whole black card situation. Now I find it ironic that Alexia wants an apology out of Nicole when she herself can't even apologize to Adriana for mistaking that her man was married. I think Nicole is blindsided by how angry Alexia is over this, and then you got her drunk bestie behind her chiming in too. So then Nicole's fiance says, okay, we'll give him some flowers and chocolate, we'll send it to him. This pisses off Alexia's husband, and now he enters the conversation saying, what are you thinking? What are you, like, he sounds like very stereotypical white Italian. You're being rude, you're being condescending. What's up with this kid? <laughs> so they're going back and forth arguing. And then you have Gertie and her husband and Marisol's husband, because I heard that they're not legally married. But yeah, her partner, they're all just silent watching on. Like the dinner was going so lovely. This scene kind of frustrated me because Nicole wasn't given the energy that I wanted her to give. Like fuck Alexia and Marisol. She should have got up from the table instead of keep going back and forth with them. But yeah, we don't see any resolve at the table. It's just awkward. And then they move on to the next scene. I'm very curious, like how do you end a dinner like this that turned into such a disaster? Does everyone just go their separate ways? Okay, y'all, we'll see you next week. But anyway, we're with Julia now. She's talking to an adoption agency. And it looks like talking to this agency, it's more likely for their adoption to go through. Now, I'm very curious, like, you know, hearing that her wife now is diagnosed with two types of cancer, like, are they still going forward with the adoption? Next scene, we're with Alexi and her son Frankie as they're going to the organization to help him be more independent. They're giving him a plan to follow through. Afterward, we're now with Gertie at her house and she's talking to Nicole on FaceTime. Of course, they're talking about the blow up that happened at dinner the previous day. And Nicole is saying how shocked she was how Alexi was just going off. And it seemed like she wants to make it right with Alexia. She's better than me. Fuck her and her gringo husband. So next thing with a few of the ladies at the strip club is Kiki, Lisa, and Larsa. They're having a girls' night out, hopefully to try to cheer Lisa up and get her mind off of her divorce. But of course, that is all she can talk about. Production even puts a timer up to show how long she was talking about Lenny. It clocked in at 30 minutes. We also find out that Lisa's trainer dropped her so he could start working with the mistress. I'm guessing Lenny was paying for all that, but... It's the audacity for me. At this point, I'm surprised Lisa didn't catch a case for all the shit Lenny has done to her. My girl Kiki, though, she is tired of all the Lenny talk, so she gets up and gets on the stripper pole to start dancing and twerking. And this is why I love Kiki. Production, please keep her on this show. Next scene, we're with Nicole and Alexia meeting up for lunch so they could talk things out. I'm annoyed already because Nicole is the one that's trying to make up with her. She tells Alexia that it was never her intention to be rude and she was triggered by Larsa's rumor that she made because she takes her profession very seriously as a Latina who's pretty. <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment on that. But she said she was very defensive behind it. Alexia, after hearing this, couldn't give a fuck less. It went in one ear and out the other. She wants her apology and she wants it now. She even implies to Nicole's face that she's a narcissist. Okay, pot. Again, Nicole is better than me. I'm taking a page out of Candace's book. Okay, neck. Okay, lips. But Alexia gets her apology after beating it out of Nicole. So now the vibe is pleasant and they're talking about the upcoming Bahamas trip. They then toast to a fun girls weekend and then we get a Shonda Rhimes fast forward three days later to a very dramatic trip coming up. And that is where the episode ends. I enjoyed this episode. They gave us a lot of conflict. I was entertained. Miami's knocking it out the park. 
But um, let's get to episode 13. So this episode opens one day before the girls' trip. We're with Julia and Adriana. They're in this um this mythical crystal shop or something and production's trying to imply like witchcraft and curses. We then cut to another preview of this Bahamas trip going off the rails and being very dramatic. We then get a little montage of all the ladies packing where with Alexis, she's talking to her son Frankie about his dad, her first ex-husband, who we see was in and out of jail. Much like Teresa, I notice Alexa gives a veiled euphemism for the term jail. Like for instance, like, oh, he went away. We know what happened, girl. There's a whole Netflix documentary about it. Next scene, we see majority of the cast gather for the trip. They're discussing in their confessionals, and thank God Nicole has a new look, because I was tired of seeing that tacky old one. So they arrive at the Bahamas, and child, <laughs> Larsa in these braids, these Jinshaw box braids, just because you prefer black dick, but... She does say that she wears braids all the time on vacation, and her grandparents are Moroccan. Okay, girl. But then Messy Production wants to ask Gertie, what does she think about her braids? I see what you're doing, Production. Gertie gives a diplomatic response to it. So they arrive at the hotel, and it is luxury. I mean, Nicole did plan it. I mean, they got the presidential suite, personal butler, the works. And I just realized that the resident drunk Marisol isn't there because she tested positive for COVID. Meanwhile, we're with Julie and Adriana as they get to their room, and they're still pushing this ghost and spell storyline. Fast forward. We see Lisa rides to the Bahamas, and the ladies just want to make sure that she has a good trip this go around. So much so that they made a game that if anybody says Lenny's name, they have to take a shot. And unfortunately for Lisa, she is failing this game miserably. So a little later, we see all the ladies having fun, especially the ones that are doing the water activities. But Lisa's still in a rut thinking about Lenny. She's thinking about all the good times they had. What's crazy to me is he's putting her through all this hell. And I bet that if he wanted to get her back during this period of time, he probably could have. So next scene is later in the evening, it's dinner time. The ladies are all dressed to the nines. Like this is basically Beverly Hills set in Miami. I also want to point out that we are halfway through the episode and no drama has happened. They're having a very successful girls trip. So at dinner, we see Julia handing out to the ladies all the trinkets and stones she got from the, uh, the witchcraft shop. Alexia is spooked by this because she says she talked to Marisol earlier and she thinks that someone is putting a curse on her because she hasn't been feeling right lately. Girl, that is the alcohol and your eating habits. Ugh, so we see the food arrive to the table and it looks really good. Y'all know I gotta point out good food when I see it. So they then start to play an adult card game at the table. Of course it's about sex, but you know it only takes one messy card to blow up the evening. So far it's just raunchy shit they talking about, but then we have Julia asking the entire table, what does DP mean? What does DP mean? Now, honestly, it did take me a minute because I was like, wait, DP? And I was like, oh, okay, double, y'all know, rhymes with stration. So later on, somehow, Adriana's man is brought up as a topic of conversation. And she says she hasn't seen him since Nicole's engagement party. Damn, she might not see him again. I probably wouldn't want to be around them either. Now, Alexia is sitting right across from Adriana, knowing full well it's her fault that all this drama around her man happened. All she has to say to Adriana is, oh, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be. If I was Adriana, I would have lunged at her from across the table. Like, the nerve of her, and she still didn't apologize yet. But the dinner continues drama-free, the night ends, and now it's day two. So the next activity for the ladies is flamingo yoga. And I recognize this immediately because if y'all watch Blink Empire New York, they went to the Bahamas and this is exactly what they did. They even had the same yoga instructor. Afterwards, we see Julia talking to a few of the ladies and she's saying that last night, she felt like Alexia was implying that she was doing witchcraft of some sort. We see in another scene, Nicole bring this up to Alexia and Alexia actually kind of confirms what Julia was thinking, but she says it's just because she's a superstitious person in general. And also because Marisol was talking to her about it the previous day. Unfortunately, this has all turned into a bigger deal than what it actually is. And speaking of that, we see Adriana complaining to some of the ladies how Alexia hasn't been a good friend to her in years. 
Brothers. Next scene, we see all the ladies having lunch together. The topic of the conversation is kids. Uh, we found a fun fact about Gertie's husband that he's fixed or got a vasectomy. I just thought it was interesting because what was the reason? Then we see Julia disclosing to Gertie in private that she's decided to move forward with her adoption plans. Back at the table, we see Alexia telling Adriana that she knows she's been talking about her and that she has a problem with her and she wants to work it out. But why didn't you apologize, girl, if you was trying to work it out? Adriana then gives her a laundry list of all the problems she has with her. And I'm just thinking maybe Alexia was just friends with you for the show. Because it seemed like they haven't fucked with each other since the reboot started. Adriana then points out Alexia's relationship with Marisol and how they basically just threw her out the group, kind of cast her to the side. But before they can even get into that, here comes Marisol out of nowhere with a loudspeaker saying, hey bitches, I'm here. And that is where the episode ends. I'm looking forward to the next episode because that seems where everything goes down. I will try to have that for y'all later in the week. I promise. I like these two episodes. You know, Miami's still bringing it. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about these two episodes in the comments below. With that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.